Get more on that overnight development with Chris Weston over at IG. Chris, thanks for checking in with us this morning. We saw the euro <coughs> pounded on the back of that news out from the ECB. They did keep interest rates on hold, but the outlook for next year isn't pretty. What's the outlook now for the euro? Do you think we'll see a, a bit of a correction? Well, we've seen the euro this morning uh, or late after, after the press conference because it you know, the collapse down to about 129.51. Now, 129.49, two points lower than that, is a bit of a key level for me. That's the 38% retracement of the November-December rally that we've seen. So, as long as that level holds, I think people are going to be looking to buy, and that's what we've seen. We've seen that level being respected this morning. So, you know, we've got to see, make sure that that 129.49 level holds in the in the going future. But I think a bit, an underlying bid, obviously, has been taken out of the euro on the back of this. What's been interesting is that Mario Draghi and the ECB have been one of the more hawkish central banks because of their view on inflation and that the actual downgrade they've come out with forwards is actually quite a significant downgrade. They're talking about 1.6% inflation next year, 1.4% in 2014. And remember their, their actual benchmark is they want to get it close to but perhaps just below 2%. So when they get one, they're looking for 1.4%, it really gives you a clear indication that they're perhaps going to look to, to cut rates. I think that the, the biggest implication from what I heard last night is their, their wide-ranging and now very public discussion that they're looking to impose negative deposit rates. Now, that's a significant development. It has wide-ranging implication for banks because the implication for the money markets, as per what we saw in Japan a number of years ago. But I think what's from a currency perspective, that's very, very negative. If they, if they create negative deposit rates, it sees all the money that's being held at the ECB, they're now getting charged, they're not charging anything at the moment. But when you, uh, if you're a bank, if you're an institution, you hold money with the ECB, uh, you know it's very secure. But if you're going to have to pay for that now, you're going to take that money off the ECB's balance sheet. That money will either make its way into the sovereign debt market, into Spanish or Italian debt, uh, the money will either make its way into the real economy or perhaps people will look, institutions will take that money and take it out to the US or take it out to Australia or take it to the UK, for example. And it's those ideas, the outflows of money taken out of the Eurozone, which will significantly weaken the Euro. So I think the Euro has a bid been taken out of it. I'd imagine a few stra bullish strategists would have re revised their, their, t their, um, their forecasts on the back of this. But I think the easiest way to play this, Kate, is against the crosses. Against the dollar, we saw it cr collapse. But against the Euro, Kiwi, because we had the, the RBNZ yesterday, Euro Kiwi absolutely was destroyed last night. It was down about 1.3%. Euro Aussie also fell quite sharply. So you play Euro weakness against the crosses, you sell rallies against the Kiwis, uh, and I think that negative real rates, if it does materialise, will be very, very negative for Euro longer term. Yeah, absolutely. You just talked us through the, the negative implications for the currency there, but just talk to us about uh, that negative deposit rate and the idea behind it and, and what the benefit is supposed to be for the economy there. Well, in terms of the banks, uh, then, then it has implications on the money market side of things. We've actually seen a lot of US money market firms actually going into, the, in, into Europe because of the potential there. So a lot of those money market firms could take money out of, out of the US longer term. I mean, if you look at the DAX yesterday, the, to me globally now, I'm looking at global, the global indices, the DAX and the CAC are probably the two most constructive markets I'm seeing at the moment. They broke out last night. They're trading at multi-year highs. They've broken through the highs last night, significantly last night. So I think that's quite interesting. But it's the idea that all this money that's parked with the ECB, now, I think they recently cut deposit rates to zero. Now, you can, you can, if you're an institution, if you've got this spare capital, you can put that money on commercial paper, but you mm. can also lend that money and, and give that money to the ECB. Uh, and it's just really very, very safe to keep that money with there. Now, if you're going to have to pay for this, like we've just seen what we've seen in Switzerland with Credit Suisse charging people to hold money with mm. there, you're going to say to yourself, rather than, than the, the, right, the, you know, have to pay for this, mm. I can actually put this money on, on deposit and actually get a yield somewhere else. You know, you can actually have, uh, you put that money in Spanish debt, for example, which mm. is being underpinned effectively by the ECB. You can put it in Italian debt, can, and you can put it in certain Northern European debt markets as well, where you're still getting a small amount of yield for that. Uh, that. The idea that you're taking that money away from there and putting it else either into the real economy is very important, uh, either into other debt markets and potentially lower Spanish-Italian yields is very important. But it's the other side of things, the currency implications I spoke about there. If you, if you do decide to take that money and put it into US Treasuries, for example, you know, you can get 
you can put you can get a 20 or basis point return in the two year US Treasury market at the moment. So it's that idea that the, the ECB are going to try and get everyone to take their money away from their balance sheet and it could be going elsewhere uh, that's going to be the implication longer term. Yeah, you mentioned the DAX breaking out there overnight and I just saw a, a stat this morning that index up 26% this year while all of this has been going on in Europe. It sounds astronomical. Well, I've actually got it up 29%, to be honest, Kate, so uh, whatever, it's a rounding number, but, you know, that's right. I mean, we've got the CAC up 14%. I mean, if you look at it in Aussie dollar terms, I think it's done even better, to be honest. If you're an Aussie investor, if you manage to buy the DAX, you've probably done even slightly better. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been the index of, of choice. Uh, the IBEX, probably not so much. I think it's down about 7% or so year to date. But it's really interesting. I mean, this has been the place. If you want to, if you want to go into a, into a market, you've gone into into the DAX. It's been the place to go. And I think what's the interesting dynamic that I've been seeing this morning is, while the uh, the German market, the German index has been making higher highs, it looks very very strong. It's in a very very strong uptrend at the moment. People are looking to buy dips where they can. It's broken, you know, some very key support levels. If you if, uh, resistance levels. If you actually look at the Bund market, you know, we're seeing negative Bund yields at the moment. If you look at the two-year German Bund last night, it's down at a negative four basis points which means you have to pay you know the German Treasury or you know basically to effectively park your money with them similar to what we're talking about there with the negative deposit rates in potentially going to happen with the ECB so there's this massive mistrust on, and this break that's going on between the bond market where people are still very skeptical mm. uh, and the equity market which is still going up very strongly perhaps last night the big moves we saw in the Bund market the German Bund market was down to uh, talk that, Mar uh, that, that Berlusconi is going to separate himself from the, from the coalition which you know that takes away some of the sentiment towards Mario Monti's party there but yeah I think uh, there's a, hu a huge dynamic now between the big divergence between very very strong equity markets in Germany and uh, very strong you know Bund markets which effectively they shouldn't be correlated like that. Okay let's talk about the local market and some opening calls I can see BHP and Rio up in London trade overnight does that bode well for our market today? It does indeed. I mean, you know, BHP, 11, 12% of our market, it's, you, you expect to see it do well. Our market should be supported on the back of that. Uh, I look at the ADR. Uh, the ADR is expected to see an open up about half a percent at this stage. There's still obviously some way to go. Uh, but that, that should support the overall benchmark. And we've got the index up about 10 points as it stands. You know, trade balance numbers out a little bit later. I don't expect to see them having a, a material impact on our equity market. I, see, I expect them to have a, a bigger impact perhaps on the currency than the equity market. I think 10 is very interesting. We've seen Credit Suisse coming out this morning and an upgrade uh, uh, 10 to a, uh, an outperform. Mm. So if there's anyone unlucky enough to be in 10 at the moment, I think what's interesting is their view is that, that, that the, um, the, the, the structural issues, the programming issues are probably priced in. They've got a 21% market share. They don't see too much downside. The balance sheet risk is now priced in and uh, or certainly the balance sheet risk has been removed. They actually see a net cash position now of 45 million, which is obviously great. Gives them a bit more flexibility. They've even, they've even suggested they could be an acquisition uh, target given their improved balance sheet now and uh, you know low, low price of share. So I think that's an interesting one. If you're in the share, clearly you're going to feel pain on Monday. But it perhaps could be worth holding on to if you believe in uh, Credit Suisse's outperformance on the back of that. Um, I think Fortescue and Jim Dolby, names like that, could be reasonably well supported given their price of iron ore still, you know, ticking up mildly last night at $118 per metric tonne. Uh, and I think Japanese markets will, will potentially be looked at very closely today. There was an article that came out in the Nikkei newspaper, one of the biggest publications there, that suggests on their polls, the LDP party led by Mr Abe could be polling more than half the votes, the 480 seats. So that would be very, very significant in next week's election. That would be very, very positive indeed. Now, also, you remember, we've got to get over, if we can get over 320 seats from Mr Abe's party, they can actually change Bank of Japan law, which would be even more spectacular. They don't need, because the DJP party, Party who have the upper house, um, you know, they can control things as well. So I think that's going to be looked at very closely. Next week's going to be a significant week. But I think, yeah, we're going to see a positive open today. Uh, whether we can see the sustain the gains into the afternoon is going to be another thing. We may see some people position for the non-farm payrolls, though. Yep, they're the big ones tonight. They will have been impacted by Sandy, so that should muddy the waters a little. How are you going to play them, Chris? I think this gets less significant, like you say, but because of Sandy, I think potentially the uh, you know the ramifications of a, of a weak number here 
uh, bode less or so will pay, pay less significance than what we've seen from previous non-farm payrolls. It certainly doesn't have a political influence like it had done in previous non-farm payrolls. It probably doesn't have a big influence on, on monetary policy like it has done in previous ones. Obviously next week we're, we're likely to hear the Fed coming out with QE4 with the FOMC uh, with, with another 45 billion in US Treasury purchases. The consensus is 86,000 jobs now. If you put that 50,000 jobs that, that people expect to, to have lost because of Sandy, you're still running it below the 12-month the, the average of 160,000 jobs. So you, you can give the market a little bit of leeway. Morgan Stanley of the Low Ball called this week, uh, this month, for oh, sorry, 15,000 jobs. I think if it comes down there, then, then you'll probably see a significant sell-off in risk assets, probably a big bid towards uh, US Treasuries, for example. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I personally think uh, that this is less of a significant event and I think next week is going to be a much bigger bigger journey considering as the FOMC meeting the implications for future uh, monetary policy and of course we've got the Bank of Japan as well which I think is going to be a, a major event for, for the Nikkei, for the dollar yen and of course then we'll have ramifications on our market as well. Yeah, plenty to keep an eye on. Chris, thanks so much. Cheers, Kate. Okay, well,